Welcome class to Rod the Art Teach Interviews. Today we have the esteemed pleasure of interviewing Brandon Malcolm of Malk Media. Brandon Malcolm is a creative overall, but he's best known for his photography and videography, which he's done all over. And he's gotten the luxury of shooting celebrities, be, being at BET, um, and having his productions, producing music videos, all different things. So I'm excited for us to get to know a little bit more about Brandon Malcolm. Welcome, Brandon. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. So, Brandon, with photography and videography, what was your moment that brought you to deciding, I want to pick up the camera and the camera is something I'm interested in? Um, It was, it was actually shortly after I met you. Um, really? In high school, in high school, I had a film class, so uh, I would be in charge of making videos with my iPhone, mm -hmm. and I wanted to edit everything. I just my friends could have edited stuff as well, but I took it upon myself. Um, and you know, shortly after we, we graduated, I went to a pawn shop. I saw a camera for three hundred dollars, and I said, eh, I want to I want to take a chance on this because I really enjoy it and I've been having fun with what I've been able to make with my phone so far. Wow. So you mean to tell me the whole entity of Malcolm Media started with just a phone? Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. So with starting with your phone, were there any learning curves that you encountered in picking up the camera, learning the camera, what was that process like? Did you take any classes or did you just kind of self-teach yourself? I was, so like I said, I was in a film class in high school, but um, it was more so just the basics, um, just like rule of thirds, composition, um, what's a zoom or what's a dolly or what's a you know, rule of thirds, just, you know, how to frame a shot. Um, but it didn't really tell me anything about um, how to film, especially with the phone. Um, so YouTube University was my best friend um, coming up. It was definitely a learning curve in terms of storage was the first thing. Um, I had like a, a 32, 64 gig phone. So I ran out of stores super quick. So just figuring out alternatives for that. And then also editing everything on my phone was difficult as well. So I'd say that that's the biggest learning curve is finding out, you know, how to manage my storage and um, how to edit and post. Just do everything within the phone like that. That was a really, a really um, big process that I had to learn. So. I know you said do everything with the phone, mm -hmm. but with the camera, how did you translate from the phone to the camera? Because I know like you have an iPhone, so I know you can use iMovie and those different kinds of things, but what is your software? How did you go about learning the software and putting your raw images from the camera to mm -hmm. the software, editing, Photoshop, all these different platforms that are out now. What right. would you say was your, because I'd imagine that you might have used multiple platforms over the span of time at this point. So what would you say was your um, easiest platform for you to use in the process? I would definitely say the easiest platform to use, you know, just for anybody starting out. Um, would be Adobe Lightroom. It'll, it'll say CC, not the not the classic. Don't use Adobe Lightroom Classic yet. I would say start off with CC because um, you can use it from your computer and it's also cloud based. So you know you can access it from anywhere. I could I could still edit on my phone if I need to, or iPad, or I could still do everything from the laptop. Shout out to Adobe. Um, they own the game in all kind of creative avenues, yep. practically everything. Um, and that creative cloud, that CC, is no mm -hmm. joke. 
So now that you are having been the person that is self-taught, um, where do you see yourself going from here? Um, me being self-taught, um, I feel like, you know, I've had about five years of experience um, in the business. So I feel like now it's time for me to pay it forward and teach others and, you know, develop a team. I've been a, a one man show for far too long. So it's just establishing um, a solid team to to really take this thing to the next level um, is, is really is really limiting me taking phone calls, um, me, you know, cold calling other people, just trying to, you know, get leads, do customer service, shoot the content, edit the content, post everything. So um, I just want to find people that I could trust with um, my vision and, 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 what, and what I plan on doing. Well, you guys heard it here first. Malcolm Media is looking for a team. Yes. So if you guys are interested, you know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, because somebody has to lay the foundation so somebody else can walk. Right. So it, we also have to be able to serve other people's vision. So I think that's phenomenal because now you have the opportunity from being the person who is the artist to be in the teacher. Mm -hmm. And I think there's so many things we can learn from you that that will help to push other people creatively. And I think you building a team will be something that will transform the game overall. So who inspires you? What are some things that inspire you in your artistry and your creativity um, as it pertains to photography, videography, what are your inspirations? Who, um, I have a lot of different inspirations, but I guess the first thing that inspired me to, you know, do this whole thing in general is, um, YouTube. Um, just seeing people being able to make money off of, not make money, but to sustain a living off of, you know, just showing their daily lives. Um, I thought that was something that was so beautiful. And I I, I, I don't really want to work a, a nine to five or work a, a job that I don't, you know, want to do for the rest of my life. Um, I want to do something I enjoy. So YouTube was definitely the biggest inspiration. Um, as far as some people on YouTube, um, D Pontiac made DDG. I've I watched I, I watched him grow up since he was like 17 or 18. I watched him graduate high school and going from that to now being a double XL freshman on um you know magazine covers, you know, just a multimillionaire um and a black man. Um just seeing stuff like that is really inspiring. So people like him, Cole Bennett, um it's, there's a lot of people in the industry that I that I take inspiration from, especially here in Atlanta. Awesome, awesome. So we understand that YouTube seems to be a heavy foundation in your overall process, right. and I think it's very important because. As a teacher who is teaching this generation of students, I've noticed YouTube is a big platform that they're engaged in. And a lot of things, having a lot of things on YouTube is keeping them engaged in their own learning. So what do you feel YouTube is doing or how do you feel YouTube has changed the game of what education can look like for an individual seeking knowledge? I think YouTube has changed the game in terms of just giving students a different option, a different choice. Um, you know, growing up there, I, you guys are blessed to have the amount of technology and just the, just the variety that you can have now. Um, when I was growing up, it's just whatever was said in school was fact. 
Um, but now there there's crash courses. That's what I love doing when I have a I, I still use it to this day. If I if I have a topic, I'll search, I'll see if there's a crash course for it, and I'll look at that first. Because I'm a visual person. Um, so when teachers, you know, give lectures and everything, I tend to zone out sometimes just because um, when I just hear audio and I don't see anything, it's just it's really hard for my attention span. Um, so I think YouTube has changed the game for students in order. Oh, well, just them being able to have a different option, being able to see different videos, different perspectives. Like a lot of people have different views on topics or they might explain it in a way that's better for that student to understand. Definitely, definitely. And that's part of what you said is part of the reason why I created this YouTube channel for my students, because everybody has a different learning style. So <laughs> if everybody has a different learning style, some people are auditory, some people are visual, some people are kinetic, kinesthetic. Um, having that ability to learn in the way that relates to you makes it easier for people to be engaged with the content that they're learning. So I, I definitely agree with what you're saying. Um, so with you having, what is a goal for you in the photography realm like what is something that you really want to see yourself achieve within photography um whether it's like shooting with a certain person or or um shooting a certain person um whether it's like shooting a celebrity or maybe working alongside a certain photographer or videographer um what's a goal of yours that you really want to accomplish or where do you want, or a goal of yourself going somewhere that you haven't been? For me, one of the biggest goals is just having uh, my own su su successful studio space in the Atlanta area. Um, I guess the the person who, I, who I'm inspired by most when it comes to that is Cam Kirk. Um, Cam Kirk Studios is by far my favorite studio um, in this area, and it's it's not only just because they have a, a dope setup or backdrop, but it's just everybody there is so so helpful and you know just so knowledgeable and talented. They're also creatives, um, so I, I want to be able to make a space like that um, that's you know that has the, the same amount of success, uh, the same amount of impact, and they also have night school classes like they'll teach. Uh, one day out the week. So it, it, it's really dope. So, okay. So if you were to have the opportunity within the next year to open your own studio, um, what would be your vision for your studio? What would make your studio different from somebody else's? Hmm. I guess I haven't really seen a space that's really good at implementing both uh, photography and videography. I feel like Cam Kirk Studios is the, the prime place for photography. And then I feel like the space like studio space would be the best place for videography in Atlanta. Um, so just having a space that's catered towards both. I think that's my main focus. Okay. So would you be interested also in offering classes and things like that for to like build and empower the next generation? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, that's the goal to inspire others, um, not to just you know keep all the knowledge for myself because then it everything just dies with me, but just being able to pass it on to somebody. Um, or, you know, somebody teaching me something um, just by hosting a class. And if I sit in, I, I might learn something that I didn't know before. And um, it's always important to be a, a teacher and a student, always be uh, willing to receive information and um, definitely being willing to, you know, pass on what you've learned. 
Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, Brandon, I want you to just give a word of encouragement, a word of inspiration to anybody who may see this video, um, specifically for me, for my students who may be watching, who may be thinking about, I want to be a videographer. I want to be a photographer, but I just don't know what to do. I don't, I'm not confident in what I'm doing. I want you to speak to that person that may have the, the phone start that you had, but can see themselves being the next mogul in the field. I want you to give a word of inspiration to that person. Okay, absolutely. Um, well, I'll, I'll say this. If you have this, this this is all you need. You don't need anything else. Um, if you have some sort of access to Wi-Fi, a stable internet connection, um, and a phone, um, that's all you re really need to start. But that's that's the main thing, just starting. Um, I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't, you know, take on that urge or try something different. If you feel like photography and videography is something that you want to get started in that's the biggest thing just starting um because as a as a creative we hold ourselves back sometimes we overthink we overanalyze I know I do um you know it's it, there's been months I've gone without posting or waiting to post waiting for the right time because you know everything's not perfect to me but the biggest thing is just getting started um, you know, of course, there's videos that I'm not going to, you know, release to the public. I, I just cringe looking at them. But um, I definitely don't regret making them at all just because, you know, that if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be where I am today. So uh, the biggest tip I have for you guys is to just get started. Just just post. Just post. I don't care what it is. Just post. Awesome. 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 So Brandon, once again, we just thank you for taking the time out today and letting us get to know a little bit more about you, about your process and about what you've been doing all along, because everybody has a start. And one thing that I took away from this is that you always have a start. Start with what you have, not with what you don't have. Don't look at what you don't have and allow it to stifle you from going and pursuing your dreams. Once you start, you never know what opportunities can open up to you. So once again, thank you, Brandon, for taking the time out to join us as we learn more about who you are and who you are behind the business of Malcolm Media. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you so much. Um, this is a wonderful opportunity. Anybody who has Mr. Robertson's class, uh, you're in great hands. Thank you. We also forgot to mention, Brandon was one of my students um, way back yes. when. Yes, yes. Oh. All right. Bye, guys. All right.